and welcome to Windhounds Fly video series, Dog Parks Explained. Rachel here. In our last video, Erin discussed the top five tips you should know before you go to the dog park. Today, we're going to discuss how to choose a park that best suits your dog's needs and sets them up to succeed. Let's get started. We are very lucky here in Toronto, as there are many different off-leash areas to choose from, but not all dog parks are the same. Let's take some time to talk about the different aspects of various dog parks to help you make an informed choice about where might be best to take your dog. Many parks have interesting and varied landscapes with trees and bushes to sniff and explore, hills to run up and down, and some even have places where your dogs can go for a swim. Other parks, in contrast, can be rather bare, with few or no trees and not much else interesting in them. Neither is good or bad necessarily, but it is usually more interesting for our dogs, and you, if the topography offers some variety. If there's nothing to do except run and wrestle, consider if this is the right place for your dog. Wrestling and running with friends is stimulating and enriching for our dogs, but it's also important to take healthy play breaks to keep those stimulation levels balanced. A park with some variety to the landscape can help to facilitate these important breaks and offer your dog some healthy alternate activities to offset that high energy wrestling. Many dog parks have water fountains to quench the thirst of our active dogs and structures built to provide shelter from the sun or rain. On hot days especially, it is best to take your dog to places where they have access to clean drinking water and somewhere to cool down after playing. You may want to consider bringing your own water for your dog if there's no accessible water fountain. And if there is no shade, it's best to take your dog either earlier or later on those hot summer days to keep your dog from overheating. It's usually best to choose parks with ample space. Dogs, like us humans, thrive on social connection, but can become overwhelmed and even stressed in crowded or overstimulating environments. Too many dogs crowded into a small area, especially if there's lots of jostling and rough play, can lead to problems. For safety and sanity, do your best to head to parks with more space and fewer dogs whenever possible. Who doesn't love a good party? Allowing our dogs to spend time with other well-socialized and amiable dogs can be a valuable enrichment activity. However, there is a difference between an upbeat party and a mosh pit. Take a look at the energy of the park before you enter with your dog. Does the play look unruly or overexcited? Routine practice of overstimulated and rough play is generally not healthy for our dogs and can lead to practice of rough and overstimulated play in the future. This kind of play can cause elevated stress levels, frustration, and in many cases can lead to dogs tipping over into fights with one another. If you arrive at the dog park and note that the play looks overly boisterous, it's probably best to skip hitting in that day. Go for a quiet trail or local neighborhood stroll instead. You could also consider burning your dog's energy with a solo game of fetch or some upbeat training. Some parks are devoted just to small dogs. This is a nice option for our more petite canines, as it can be dangerous for small and large dogs to play together, especially if the play is overly boisterous. Small dogs can get easily bowled over and stepped on during rough play. This is neither safe nor fun for them, and in some cases can put them in a position where they could get severely injured. With all of these points in mind, you will be better equipped to choose a park that is best suited to set you and your dog up to succeed. Have fun exploring and stay safe in designated off-leash areas. What kind of parks do you think would be best for your dog? Tell us in the comments below. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. Have fun exploring.